Bears team with one of the league's very best defenses. Now, there's no defense for the Texans' slow start to the season, but don't you dare blame J.J. Watt, as any sibling knows. The only person who's allowed to talk trash to your brother is you. Fortunately for the Steelers, they have two of them on their side of the field today. Now, they just have to find a way to calm mama's nerves. Jeff Darlington went to Wisconsin to find out what it was really like growing up Watt. Football is kind of the family business. My mom gave birth to a lineman, a fullback, and a linebacker. Yeah, ouch, right? I know. <laughs> Our names are JJ, TJ, and for some reason, Derek. <laughs> All three have achieved the highly ambitious and improbable goal of reaching the NFL. Pressure and taken down. But the success story of the Watt brothers, Justin James. JJ's a big kid, smart kid. He loved books, loved reading. Derek John. Derek is extremely meticulous about everything. He's got to have everything just so extremely organized. And Trent Jordan. TJ's always been maybe a little bit more of a free spirit. Begins with their parents, John and Connie in the small town of Pewaukee, Wisconsin. All right, <laughs> look at you. You're right, buddy. First was JJ, 1989. Then Derek, born in 1992. The doctor kept saying that JJ would be about eight pounds. And so after 21 hours of labor, when he was born, I remember her saying nine pounds, 14 ounces, 22 inches long. And I just kind of sat up and went, who had a baby that big? <laughs> and she said, that was yours, ma'am. <laughs> I remember them telling me that they had to break his collarbone to get him out. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then Derek, they said, you know, should come three weeks early. And he was just a weapon nine seven. So, <laughs> and his collarbone also had to break to get out. Hey, you stay there. The boy's first love was hockey. <laughs> as baby brother TJ would be exposed to early, as in days after being born in 1994. The baby's all bundled, and, you know, we've got blankets over him, and so we just took him to the hockey rink, and all I could think of was, gosh, I hope nobody thinks I'm a bad mom for bringing this brand-new baby into a cold hockey rink, but from there on out, uh, we just called the little ones the rink rats. They were all really, really strong in hockey, but it got to the point the boys would be playing at different places, sometimes states away. And not only that, but it was getting pretty hard to find JJ size, uh, you know, 15, 16 skates and, and paying for new skates for each of them every three to six months. So we finally just said, forget about the hockey as much as you guys like it. And to this day, they would all three tell you that hockey is their favorite sport. They really would. As the boy's interest and success in football grew, John, a fireman, was forced to get creative in how he could practice with his sons. The favorite game of the kids when they were growing up would be to just go out in the backyard and I would take a baseball and they would get their glove and go about 20 feet away and I would just take a ball and throw it to all different places and we called it crazy catch. They would have to make diving catches all over the backyard. Well, I better move way back to J.H. He's tall. If they weren't outside, John and Connie were usually in the kitchen, where feeding their three sons was a team effort. They had milkshakes every night. They had two dinners every night, hot breakfast every morning before school. So there was a lot of eggs, a whole lot of meat. I mean, I know the butchers at the stores kept saying, wow, this will last you for a couple of months. And I would turn around and laugh and say, I'm hoping it lasts me through the week. <laughs> Well, hold on, son. You said two dinners a night? Oh, yes. Every night, Every two night. dinners. About 4 o'clock or 4.30, they would eat a full dinner, you know, whatever it might be, roast potatoes and, you know, greens. And then at about 8 o'clock, 8.30, they would get their second dinner, and it would be a complete dinner again. Today, due to league COVID-19 restrictions, John and Connie Watt will be home in Pewaukee, the place where this journey started for the brothers.
it's a little less awkward at least being home because I can clap as much as I want <laughs> without having somebody look at me because when you're in someone's stadium, everybody else is like, what are you doing? <laughs> we have a question for uh, Justin James in Houston. Justin, do we have you? Yeah, hello, Justin. Uh, <laughs> better, better Brother Gazette here. Um, I just had a question. Uh, do you guys always do your press conferences together? Thanks, I'll hang up and listen. <laughs> It's the first. Side by side always, James. What do you think this is going to feel like for you when you see your three sons on the same field? For me, a definitely proud moment. I think it's just going to be so special to see them all. I've always wanted a picture of all three of them in their uniforms, and they've never given that to me. To see them on the same field, just as brothers, it's just such a cool thing because it's a different kind of experience for them. and. You don't know if it's going to happen again, so it's definitely something to just cherish that moment. Well, today, Mama Watt finally gets what she wanted. There are all three brothers getting a picture together on the field before the game. Now, not technically in their full uniforms, so maybe she'll send a text and they can get that after the game. DJ Watt and the Steelers defense have been